Welcome back, everybody, to the Allegheny Health Network Nightly Sports Call. I'm Josh Taylor. Taking your phone calls, 412-575-2600. Also taking your tweets at Josh Taylor HD. You know you've been gone for a while when things are a little bit different. I'll admit it. It's been quite a while since I've been back here in the studio. Missed hanging out with you guys. But you know things are, are, are different when you come back, and the guy who usually checks in first on Twitter wasn't the first guy. Josh, you're slacking. you got to get faster. Max checks in first on Twitter and says, what is your prediction on the game tomorrow? I'm expecting a Penguins win tomorrow. I had this conversation with Robert Sir in the uh, 93.7 The Fan Studios earlier this morning when I was hosting Bucko, Bucko Talk. We had this talk during the break. And my prediction for the next three games, I think the Penguins win here, lose game six in Ottawa, win game seven at home. I'm expecting a straight up home in home series going forward. I think Penguins win it in seven. They win at PPG, they go and lose at Canadian Tire Center, but they come back and close it here at home in seven games. But that's kind of a little bit more of a longer prediction, but that's what I'm thinking. Um, let's go to the phone lines. Let's go to John in Banksville. Let's talk about the Penguins. John, you're on the nightly sports call. Josh, good to see you. I always enjoy it when you're on. Appreciate you calling in. Uh, yeah, a couple of points about tomorrow's game. Uh, I've had a season ticket for 25 years and have been a fan forever. And for the life of me, I cannot figure out this team. Uh, <laughs> one day they look tired and uh, totally out of it. Next day they come back uh, all feisty and uh, win the game. But a couple of things. Um, it looks like some uh, sleeping giants have woken up finally. Crosby finally, for the first time in this series, looked like Crosby. And I really like the fact that Wilson never take him out again. He, he adds a little bit of grit and strength and will defend his uh, teammates. Uh, it seemed early in the series they were throwing us around like uh, we were the uh, – skinny kid in the playground thrown around by the bullies. And I think that uh, that uh, sort of gave a shot in the arm to the whole team. And also, Chris Kunitz, I think, has been really feisty. And even for his age, has played a really good series. Appreciate the call. Uh, we got to get moving here, but I do appreciate the call. To your point, I agree with you on Scott Wilson. I thought he's been a really good addition. Chris Kunitz has been playing Chris, Huna Chris Kunitz's game. He has been known to be a speed guy, a little bit of a skill guy, but more than anything, Chris Kunitz is a physical player. He's fearless, he goes in the corners, and he will lay the body every chance he gets, and he's done that in this series. I'm going to add one more guy to that list that I want to see in this lineup every night until he proves otherwise. I want to see more of Carter Rowney. The shifts that he puts out over and over again repeatedly have been solid, Night in, night out. There were a couple games in this series already where that Rowney, Cullen, I think it was Kuhnhackle, that line, uh, before Kuhnhackle got switched around. That line had been really, really good, if, I'm, if I remember correctly, but especially Rowney and Cullen together. Those two guys have been a really good pair on that fourth line before Rowney got moved up to the third line before game four. But those are guys I want to see more of, like Scott Wilson, like Carter Rowney. They have been able to add a physical element to this series that I think it is severely lacked for the Penguins. So I totally agree with you there. Let's go to Dell in Bedford. Dell, you're on the nightly sports call. Hi there. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. I just want to make one small comment and see what you think about it because I know there's other people want to talk. Um, the Penguins, I would like to see them stand right in front of the goalie. I watched some of the other games, and it seems to me there's a higher percentage of sco uh, scoring instead of the longer shots that the Penguins are taking. I know they may be a lot of physical, but uh, what do you think about having them uh, – work a little closer in front of the net. I think you're absolutely on it, and thank you for the call. I think you're absolutely right. I think if you look at the games where the Penguins score their most goals, especially the ones in bunches, it's really the same thing. You're going to get those shots closer to the net. They're going to be inside inside the slot. They're going to be in with inside the face-off circles. The games when they've struggled to score goals, a lot of their shot attempts are coming from the outside of the face-off circles. You can really look at the shot charts and figure out where those shots are coming from. If you see more shots inside the circles or between the circles in the slot, odds are you're going to score more goals. If you see more shot attempts near that blue paint, you're probably going to score more goals. And what happened last night, that's exactly what we saw. Uh, Ole Mata was near the net when he scored. Cindy Crosby was near the net when he scored. The only one that was really from a considerable distance was Brian Dumoulin. That's because it was a shot that deflected off of Dion Phaneuf's skate and went in the net. But you're absolutely right. Got to get closer to the net. Those better shot attempts have better opportunities to score goals. Key example, Nashville. The two goals Nashville scored tonight to take the lead over uh, Anaheim, the one that tied the game with Wilson in front, was in front of the net. The one that they scored afterwards with Ogner in front of the net. That's the best place to get those goals. Let's go to Roger in North Hills. Roger, you're on the nightly sports call. Yeah. 
I uh, was watching the Anaheim uh, Predators game today. Yes, sir. Those officials are obviously calling a different game than the officials that we have. They were calling penalties when they were due, and they weren't putting up with a lot of that punching and kicking. Yeah, I think it, that uh, maybe our officials need to pay a little closer attention to that. I, I think a lot of people share that frustration. I think if there's one thing you can point out with this postseason, it's the inconsistency of the officiating. Just within the series, the individual series themselves, you don't even need to compare series between teams. Just look at some of the individual series from game to game. The inconsistency in the officiating from game to game, what they're looking for, what they're calling from game to game is inconsistent. It's inconsistent across series, and I think that reflects across the league as a whole. And it's really not just the playoffs. I think it happens a lot in the regular season, but you're starting to see that as more of a trend. I think the league is favoring itself anywhere you look as far as inconsistency in officiating. Good point there. Let's go to Brad before we go to a break. Brad, you're on the nightly sports call. Hi, Josh. How are you, buddy? Good. How you doing? Good. I have I have, a, I have two pe- a penguin question and my and the Steeler question. All right, fire away. Okay, my Steeler question is: um, Juju Smith Schuster is he going to take be tight end? And my penguin question and comment are: um, since Chad Rudell or however you say his name. Since who? Chad. R- oh, Ruido. Chad Ruido. Yes. Yeah. Um, is he? Um, not going to play tomorrow, and will Derek Pouliot play, and will uh, straight play tomorrow And Hornquist? All right, well, appreciate the call. Uh, as far as Hornquist is concerned, I think he's still uh, day-to-day. I think it'll probably be a game-time decision tomorrow for Mike Sullivan. As far as Chad Ruedel, he is ruled out for game five. My guess is you'll probably see Mark Streit. Um, I don't think Derek Pouliot is in that discussion right now. I think he's one of those black knights who is pretty much practicing with the team and it's pretty much the scout team, if you will, as far as helping those guys game plan and get ready to face opponents. Um, as far as your Steelers question, Juju Smith-Schuster was drafted to be a wide receiver. He will be a wide receiver. I expect at the very least he will be the fourth guy on this offense. I think he eventually will have a shot at taking a slot position in the future, assuming uh, he has a chance to compete with Eli Rogers. But Juju Smith-Schuster, for all intents and purposes, is a wide receiver. We'll take a break. We'll take more phone calls and more tweets here on the Nightly Sports Call. Stay with us.